Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Cameron. So today I'm in a fragrance mood and I'm in a creative mood. Maybe I'll make a spiritual video soon. I don't know. I've been kind of dark on the spiritual side lately. Not like anything bad per se. Just like, I don't know. I haven't had any major like life altering realizations lately. Um, but I wanted to come on here and talk to you guys a little bit about fragrance. I've been kind of like looking at my collection the past couple of days and like I really love my collection right now. Um, you guys may have seen my fragrance collection video I did a while ago and I've actually already added a few perfumes since then. I want to say one or two. I think two but they were cheapies guys like nothing dramatic. Um, so it's pretty much the same as what I showed you like a few weeks ago when I did my fragrance collection. And a few months ago, I had done a top 10 perfumes for life. But obviously, some of these perfumes I didn't necessarily have in my collection at that time. So the top 10 perfumes for life is kind of different now. Um, and when I say for life, I think that's a dramatic title. I think I'm not going to call it that. I think I'm just going to say top 10 perfumes right now um because my taste is obviously always changing I'm always adding things to my collection sometimes adding and taking away and also sometimes you're just in more moods for some things than others so yeah this is kind of the current um my current top 10 in my collection like when I think most adored there was a, like one or two that I went back and forth between putting in here um when I think like okay like oh no I'm not gonna pull it out there's a couple honorable mentions in my mind but like just to purely stick to the 10 that I chose because I think these are probably as of now my favorite 10 let's talk about them so in the number 10 spot I'd probably put this bad boy new little entry um is this and I'm wearing this right now this is YSL's Lieb Intense and this is what I wanted for a really really long time and I finally got and I'm very happy to have and I did go ahead and buy myself the large bottle um I think a because I just love the way this bottle looks the small bottles are cute too but this is just such a stunning presentation to me I think it's classy and um I love the juice. I love the juice ever since I smelled it last summer. Um, I've thought about it. The other one that I smelled last summer, there's there's another perfume that I smelled last summer that didn't make it into this top 10, but I really like. And then another one that I don't have, but I honestly still kind of want. It's Black Opium Le Parfum. It's just a really well-rounded uh, solar vanilla to me. Like a floral solar white floral vanilla hold on my cat wants to come in come on papa you in or you out okay well i'm gonna leave the door cracked for him but um yeah this to me just makes me feel really like like put together put together business um i think because of the bottle like in the presentation it makes me feel that way but also like there's I don't know it's really pretty it is floral um lots of lavender and it's kind of like fougere in a way with the amount of lavender that's in this um but lots of lavender lots of orange blossom in here as well um but there's like a honeyed quality to the florals in here especially the orange blossom so it's sweet um but then there's also this like animalic musk to me and the base of this that I don't think is really talked about a lot. And something I was thinking to myself, I, I did a really weird layering today that I was kind of feeling. I was kind of feeling raunchy summer vibes. I had to give my dog a bath. And um, so I had gotten a new bathing suit when I went to California because it, it was on sale. And I was like, oh, let's get this now because um, it was really cute. And so I was wearing that and my little cover up. And I was just like, uh, I was kind of longing for summer, you know, like, you know, the summer vibe of like 
you know, going to the beach and like getting a little sweaty and like mixing with your suntan and just kind of like an animalic, um, you're a little sweaty, but like it smells good. Do you know what I mean? Not even suntan lotion-y, but yeah. So I, I mixed um, like a coconut body spray from Bath and Body Works, Coco Paradise, and a little bit of Halston because Halston kind of has this herby thing going on, but also like a muskiness going on. And then I mixed it with a spray of this and it was really nice. But yeah, there's like an animalic musk to this, like a skin musk um, that a lot of people I don't think really emphasize in this fragrance that I find to be really hot. And I really would like to try wearing this in summer. But yeah, I, when I bought this, I think another like positive association I have with this, which is why it um, made it to the top 10 is like, I, in a way, even though like, I'm not necessarily where I want to be like completely right now in my life. In a way, being able to buy this for myself as a little Christmas treat to me was like, I'm an adult. I made it, you know? And that may sound like silly to a lot of people, but being able to purchase this for myself was kind of like, and the big bottle was kind of like, you know, we're doing it. We're doing this thing called life because I really wanted this for a long time. So yeah. Um... YSL's Leave Intense. Nice. I have six minutes and I've already like rambled on. Um, next, we'll probably put mm, probably my Eagle Intense. Lovely. Oh, so pretty. Juicy, juicy like mandarin orange and like bergamot, like a really juicy fruity opening. And then the heart is all rose and all jasmine and it's so pretty and it sits on this base of sandalwood it is truly like the perfect it's fruity floral but like grown it's like the perfect fruity floral in my brain yeah it's it's beautiful there was another no it wasn't necessarily a fruity floral it's more of a fruit chili that almost i almost put in the video and then there was another white floral that I was thinking about putting in the video too. But this one is just, this one does something to me. It's what I call my brunch scent. And I'm so excited for spring because I can't wait to start like really, really wearing this one again. Um, so yeah, this is Lancome's Idol Intense. I've smelled the regular one and that one's fine too. And I smelled like Idol Aura and the other flankers, but this is, this is my favorite one. Yeah, good stuff. Okay, in number eight spot, <laughs> I'm gonna put the Ciara by Revlon. This is probably, I guess you could call this vintage too, but I'm pretty sure this is like my favorite vintage profile scent. Um, and I like, I have one, two, three, four, five, six. I would say I have about like six, truly truly vintage like this is a vintage bottle of angel and some people would consider angel vintage because it's like 90s and this is technically a vintage perfume but this is like a modern formulation um but i don't know this is like this is my favorite vintage vintage perfume and there's a lot going on in this there is um it's very powdery to my nose uh, very animalic. There's a deep animalic must to this powdery, resinous, animalic. Um, lots of resins, lots of incense. Um, the powderiness, I think, comes a lot from orris, which is a flat, like the root of iris. And then I also detect like just a general rosiness too. And a spiciness as well. To a lot of people, and this people say it smells like Dr. Pepper. I've never necessarily, I could see that, but I've just never had that association with that. To me, the association is like a sexy Bond girl would wear this. And I just, this is like 14 bucks guys. And I will probably always have a collection of this or have this in my collection because I have a lot of fondness associated with this. This is one of like the first, um, when I started collecting like one of the first perfumes I got and um, I just have a lot of fun memories of this. I really like this stuff. This is Ciara by Revlon. Okay, 
next. And the number seven spot is going to be this baby, which is Hypnotic Poison by Dior. And this one, so like some of these fragrances, right, that you're seeing in the video were a lot, ranked a lot higher in my last, um, like top 10 perfumes for life. And that doesn't, honestly, that doesn't necessarily mean that they've like slipped spots or anything like that. I'm just like in a different, like right now I'm in a different season, if that makes sense. But this one is still, this one's still obviously made another top 10. It's a little, I think maybe I placed it a little further down, but this is a beautiful almond sandalwood. Um, sorry, my cat is so picky. Now he's trying to be loud again. You coming in or not? Exactly. Yeah, he just came in, guys. Um, there's almond, sandalwood, plum. Like, I think there's a niece in here. There's definitely like a licorice -y vibe. I love licorice and perfumes, especially like when it's sweet licorice. Um, and people have compared this one to root beer, which I can see that association, and Play-Doh, which I can see that association. But this works really well with my chemistry and just makes me feel like when I wear this, I feel very warm and inviting. Weirdly, I kind of see when I wear this, I also feel warm, but like warm and intimidating. I can't describe it. And also like, I don't know, this one people, it gives a warm and inviting vibe. I think like I get compliments. On, I've gotten compliments on this before. This one is actually not one I got complimented on a lot, to be honest. Um, which is shocking because I do like the smell, but yeah, it's good. But <laughs> um, back to this one. This one just makes me feel warm and inviting and like sexy and cozy, sexy and cozy for sure. And I think this is Adele's signature scent, which I think totally suits her. So yeah, this is Dior's Hypnotic Poison. It's kind of one of those like kitchen sink scents. So like I kind of tried to describe it to you, but it's ultimately going to be up to your nose to to smell this one and see what what sticks out to you about it because me listing all of those notes it's one of those perfumes where i can list all those notes to you and you can kind of detect them but it, it's it's totally its own beast which is what i love about older perfumes um and designer perfumes too a lot of the times at least older designer perfumes like yeah this is older this is like from the 90s now modern formulation this is the edt okay Next, which was like, I want to say my number one perfume last time. And again, I don't love it any less. I just haven't been wearing this one as much because I need to, probably once I buy a new bottle in a large size, this will go probably bump up a little bit in my list because I've kind of been neglecting this baby Dior's Addict. We're at, I think, number six, right? Yeah, we're in the number six slot. And the reason I've been neglecting this one is not because I don't love it, but because I've been doing that thing that like scarcity mindset of not wearing it so much because I only have a little bit left, which I shouldn't be doing, but I'm doing. And it is the most intoxicating vanilla to me. To me, this is like my favorite vanilla scent ever. I'm trying to think if I have any other like soul vanilla notes or like soul. This is not that this is a soul vanilla perfume, but to me, it's like a vanilla. I have other vanilla perfumes like um, Jean-Paul Gaultier Labelle, but that's like vanilla, tonka, and pear. This is probably like, this is also a vanilla perfume, but it's, I get a lot more of the almond and sandalwood. This is my, this is like my vanilla perfume. I think I want to get a big bottle of this, and I think if I got like a, a big bottle of Black Opium Le Parfum, I think it'd be good on vanillas. Like, not that I, do, I love all vanillas, but, um, I think if I got those two, I'd be like, yeah, we're cooking. Um, but this is the most beautiful vanilla. It's a suggestion of a gourmand, but it's not. Like, because it's floral. It, there's in, I get a lot of interesting notes in this. It's it's vanilla, like a deep... So I get like a bourbon-y vanilla from this. And then I also get like a jasmine from this. And I think... There's, there's some white florals going on in here other than the jasmine, maybe orange blossom. So it's like this floral vanilla, but it smells like almost gourmand, but it's not. And then there's also a general sort of like greenness to it. But then there's, it's really powdery to my nose too, and also a little smoky. 
hard to describe, I know, but I love this one. I wish I, I, I know I will get a, um, a 3.4 ounce soon. Maybe I can, oh, well, speaking of, guys, I have a boyfriend now. Maybe I can convince, maybe I can drop some hints to my boyfriend to get me <laughs> a full-size bottle of this. Or maybe Black Opium Love Parfum. I want this first because I like Black Opium Love Parfum, but nowhere near as much as this. Um, and then you know what else, guys? Sorry. I just love, I love Dior perfumes in general. You can tell. Hello. Um, something that I haven't, like, liked in the past, but maybe it's the association that I have, like, to meeting him for the first time. We went to Nordstrom's together, and I remember smelling... I don't know which iteration of Miss Dior. One of the iterations of Miss Dior, I have like a fond memory of it. I don't even remember exactly what it smelled like other than I remember sniffing it and be like, wait, this is kind of good. Um, So I kind of want to go back to the minorities the next time I visit him and then um, smell the Miss Dior's too. The point is my boyfriend will be buying me some perfumes. <laughs> um hopefully in the near future so yeah um but yeah that, that is Dior's Addict in the number six spot so these five I chose because these five like guys I don't these like these five I I really love right now like these like Dior um Hypnotic Poison and Addict I know will always be in my collection same thing with like Angel and like yeah, but right now, oh, here comes my asshole dog, Dodger. Really, Dodger? Really? Come here. <laughs> Come on. Go, go with mama. Come on, he just barges in, like, no care. But, um, yeah, like, Hypnotic Poison and Addict have truly, like, achieved an angel, especially the vintage. I haven't tried the new formulation, but have achieved such a godly status in my collection that like they're gonna forever, I know for sure will like always be my collection. That being said, the five I'm about to share with you are like the most special to me in my current season of life. Like the last few months, if that makes sense. Um, and that's why they're my top 10 perfumes right now. That's why they're the top five of my top 10 perfumes, if that makes sense. This one in particular was such a left, I guess not necessarily a left turn for me, because I do like vintage perfumes, but is a left turn for me in the sense that I've never really been a Chanel perfume fan. Like I've just never, that's never really spoken to me. And then I honestly don't remember exactly what possessed me. I think I, it's a combination of liking this specific iteration of the bottle. And then I remember someone talking about Chanel number no. five, the EDT and how it is like a, like a colder, more like stream, almost like streamlined version of the EDP. And I thought to myself, I was like, I've never honestly really given Chanel number no. five a shot. It is an iconic perfume, um, but I've never, like I've smelled it, but I've never really given it a shot like on my skin. And I totally just found this for a good price, like a little one ounce. and totally blind bought it like impulse complete impulse buy um and i was reading the reviews of the edt and people were mentioning just how it is like a soapy powdery floral and that really appealed to me in general soapy and powdery perfumes in like winter really appeal to me um obviously like the the deep ouds and the musks and the vanillas and the sweet syrupy perfumes of course apply to me too and and or appeal to me too but something about like January but and into February like end of January into February where we're like hinting at spring especially beginning of March here too it's still not even hinting at spring but like we're hinting at spring but like it's not spring soapy powdery stuff really like appeals to me and so again found this for a good price I adore the bottle I like I like this flacon better than the the Chanel EDP bottle and wow I had like a love affair with this like the first time I sprayed this and then I was like what's going on 
And then the second time I started this, I was like, what the fuck's going on? And for like, I think I got it on like a Friday. And guys, I wore this like all weekend, basically. So um, it is like, sorry, if you hear my dad singing, you're just going to have to hear my dad singing. But wow, there's a lot going on in here. There's the aldehydes, of course, and the aldehydes are like, I can't describe aldehydes to someone who's never really like smelled them. You kind of just have to smell aldehydes and then you'll get it. But the aldehydes in here are like cold. Like it gives the general fragrance a cold feel, but also soapy, cold and soapy and floral. But at the same time, when I say cold guys, this fragrance in general feels warm. So I, uh, I can't say it's a cold fragrance. It's not. It's streamlined. It's smooth. It's smooth. Smooth is the word. It's not cold. It's not cold. I think it's colder than the EDP, but it's like buttery to me. Oh, I love this stuff. And when you first spray it, I get a lot of the lemon in the top. The lemon and neroli, I think, is in the top too, to my nose. Like a le It's a really, when you first spray the aldehyde, you get the aldehyde, or when you first spray the perfume, you get the aldehyde punch mixed with the lemon and the neroli. But then I immediately detect the civet in this. And it's like this sexy to my nose. It sounds vintage probably to a lot of other people, but like the lemon playing with the animalic musk. And then there's a vanilla in this too. Oh my God, it's so sexy to me. It makes me feel like honestly a little erotic guys, which I don't necessarily know that other people get that. My boyfriend actually smelled this and he was like, it smells good, which I didn't think he was going to think it smells good because it kind of smells vintagey. But to me, this guys, this smells like raunchy. It's weird how it smells raunchy to me, but then at the same time, it's soapy and powdery. So when I first spray it, like I get a lot of the lemon, a lot of the musk, and it, it, it is raunchy to me. But then as time goes on, that's where we get more of that cold feeling. That's where it starts to cool down a little bit. It feels really smooth, really buttery. And then the floral heart kind of comes through, uh, which is like the rose, lots of iris, and jasmine, maybe some other florals too. Um, but yeah, this fragrance really took me on a journey that I was not expecting to feel. And I think that's why, actually, it's funny, I didn't realize I put it in number five. Maybe that was subconscious. That's why Chanel number five, the EDT, the EDP, I can't necessarily say I feel the same about because I haven't really given it the same shot. But Chanel number five, the EDT is in my number five slot and definitely makes me curious to try more Chanel perfumes, but got to kind of like go in store and um, be close to somewhere where I can test it and then come back and test them. And you know what I mean? Because they're definitely an investment. Okay. <clears throat> number four, oldie but a goodie. It's my vintage formula uh, of Mugler by Angel and this fragrance means the world to me. The other day I wore a ton of this, which Angel, to be fair, is a fragrance you should probably go a little lighter on. I mean, what, do what you want, but like I do generally try to consider others. I know that's a lie, sometimes I don't. I don't know, I try to be mindful because I work in a doctor's office, but the other day I kind of, I kind of broke the rules and just said, fuck it. And I put a shit ton of this on. I don't know what necessarily possessed me. I don't know, but I just did. And I've never had such a, this is the most by far, I think by and large, probably the most polarizing fragrance in my collection. There's other, there's like vintagey perfumes that I wear, but even then those don't garner the sort of polarizing reactions from people. I had the day that I wore this, I had like two, I had one one person tell me, like ask who the fuck's perfume was so strong, obviously it was mine, and say it smelled bad. Um, yeah, so two people didn't like this. And then I have two other people, two or three other people who are like, oh my God, what perfume are you wearing? It's just the most, like, it's just so beautiful. Like, And so the full spectrum of reactions to this always amazes me. I, I love it, but it, to me, it truly just speaks to the quality and character of this perfume and how special it is. Even though pe people hate this perfume, you can't deny it garners a certain reaction, 
positive or negative that is just like to me admirable because it means it, it like it makes a statement to me to many people they'll call this a stripper perfume or maybe it's a mature perfume it to me it is this vintage formula is quite spicy quite earthy quite sweet quite syrupy quite chocolatey powdery even warm very very warm fragrance to me i love the way it warms up on my skin and how it wears on my skin it goes super beautiful spicy vanillic i just love the way this perfume makes me feel um and whether or not people like it or not i could definitely go lighter on the sprays <laughs> than i did the other day and normally i do when i wear angel um but I, I, I freaking love this perfume, guys. I really, really do. I have a special, like, I have a special tie to this perfume. And I think I always will. Um, I'll definitely buy another vintage bottle of this. Um, when that starts to become not affordable or not feasible for me, um, and I have to start looking at the modern formulation, then we'll cross that bridge. Um, I'm sure the modern one is fine. But because this is, I wanted to try Angel... I, I kind of had a feeling I would like Angel, and then I did. I tried it. And so when I went to go look and purchase it, because I thought I might like it, I, I did want to try the vintage first to kind of just know what really, like, the true essence was. And I don't regret that one bit. I think it's it's awesome, guys. So Angel by Mugler. Terry Mugler. Um, the next one is one. Let's talk about, okay, let's talk about polarizing fragrances again. Because I hated this when I first sprayed it. And look at my ass now. Now I love it. Number number freaking three. And again, it's not necessarily number three because I think, oh, excuse me. Excuse me. It's not necessarily number three because I think it's like the most special. But again, right now, it's like just one I've been wearing so much. And that just feels so special to me in this season of my life. Um, and I want to honor. Oh, Aqualine is pink sugar. I love her so much. I love her so much. I think I love her so much because it like, it's just a total celebration of sweetness and girliness and youth and just sugar, spice and everything nice, you know? Like when I first tried this, I, I really had a problem. I was getting a lot of um, the burnt sugar from this was coming off a little plasticky, but I think it was A, me judging too quickly and not letting see how it like developed on my skin. And B, have you ever heard that thing with like the first couple sprays of juice of your perfume sometimes can be like a little rank? I don't know if you've heard that theory, but I kind of think that might've been what was going on because ever since I sprayed this for the first few times, I've been enamored with this since guys. Um, I do get a licorice note in here, which I love because you know I love sweet licorice perfumes, which brings me to my next point. I definitely need to eventually bite the bullet and try Lolita Lumpica. Um, but yeah, sweet, uh, sugary, erythritol, licorice, um, definitely gourmand. And so when you first spray this, you might just get straight up the burnt sugar and be like, what, what else is there, right? Because there's a lot of notes listed in this. After the opening with that burnt sugar, right? It just becomes the fair to me, like funnel cake, funnel cake, sweetness, cotton candy. After about probably like an hour, maybe 30 minutes to an hour, the even the burnt sugarness is gone and it's just, you smell like a lovely, sweet, yummy, sugary, baked good. And I just, I just love it. And this is affordable. This is another one that I think just be based on the sheer affordability alone like if I went broke today or broke tomorrow right and let's say I use up all my perfumes right due to the sheer affordability I think I could probably make these two happen right this is both of these are about 15 bucks for full sizes and I could be happy you know so that's just also just speaks to the specialness to me. That's also why those two, these two in particular are really special to me. Um, 
Because let's let's face it, guys, the other perfumes I'm showing you in this video aren't necessarily the most affordable. They're really tr special to me, like special, special, special. You know, like there's a lot of special perfumes in here to me. But if I were to lose everything tomorrow, right, and this was no longer accessible to me, I really am glad that that there are options in this world to smell beautiful on a budget. And these two I really are special to me in this video because of it. Sorry to get on the tangent, but yeah. Um, this is great. This is great. It's a celebration to me of youth, of girliness. And I think that's also why it means so much to me at this stage in my life. Um, I've really, really been, it's funny because <laughs> cause I'm not really giving that vibe right now. Um, but I've really, really been leaning more into my femininity lately and just being so like, just being happy to be a girl. I love it. I love my life. <laughs> so yeah, I think I love pink sugar a lot for that reason, for what it represents to me. Um, is it any surprise we're going to be talking about more Mugler <laughs> for the last two? This is so cool, guys. This is the EDP. Uh, this is just a little one ounce of Aura by Mugler. What a cool freaking fragrance, guys. I'm going to enumerate all of the things I get from this. I get a fruity accord from this. I get a, a mentholated accord from this. I get an herbal accord from this. I get a green accord from this. I get a musky accord from this. It is, there's like an animalicness to this. Um, there is rhubarb, which gives it that tart greenness. There is, ooh, I want to say it's, there's like a green fruit going on here. It could be pear, it could be apple maybe, but it's, it's fruity. It is, there's obviously flowers in here. I don't know exactly what flowers, but there's a little bit of everything going on in here. It's humid. This fragrance is humid, guys. It feels like truly the adverts for this do it so much justice. It's a jungle. It's a jungle. It's a sexy jungle woman. And I just, I love it. I can't describe how unique it feels to me, how different it feels to me. And... It's really special to me. I finished a bottle of the EDT in the summer and when summer comes around, that is definitely one that I really would like to stock up on because, oh, it's so pretty in the summer. The EDT is a lot airier, but I really, really have been enjoying the EDP lately because it's strong um, and I've just really liked it. Um, and I wanted to try the EDP before I repurchased the EDT, but the EDT is just so like, so breezy. It's a lot fruitier, a lot more vanillic and just breezy. But I love both of these and I just, Aura is just such a special perfume and I love the bottle. I love the green heart. Are you kidding? Um, it's unique and it smells amazing on my skin. I, I really like the way it plays with my chemistry. Um, so yeah, and I love the way you can hold it too. It's so easy to hold, easy to spray, like ch -ch -ch -ch. love it, love it, love it, love it. Um, genius, genius perfumery. Um, speaking of genius perfumery, so Angel was kind of, and it still is, I love her to death. This is a for life type of perfume, right? For me, um, I hadn't really been a alien girl, right? I hadn't really, I had tried Alien El Extraordinaire, loved it, didn't last on me. And I'll be honest, this doesn't really last on me either because it is a modern formulation but it also doesn't it like it doesn't last long on me but it's not like it's not a disappearing act per se like it lasts a few hours like three or four you know um but the scent itself is just so special to me I love Jasmine this is Alien by Mugler and yes this is the current formulation I didn't when I bought it I thought I was buying on eBay the vintage formulation um basically I was scammed because the picture was a a picture of the vintage formulation and then they sent the it was the modern Mugler box whatever and I was considering returning it but like immediately when I smelled it 
I was like, okay, well, I'll buy a vintage sometime, <laughs> maybe, and maybe I will. Um, but just the smell was so addicting to me. It is this synthetic jasmine, yes. Okay, it's a beautiful jasmine, sexy jasmine, but it's grapey, guys. It's purple. Like, it, it looks, it smells how the bottle looks, guys. It is this out of this world like terrestrial jasmine and then it sits on this base there's a like an amberiness in the base and there's a woodiness to me in the base now depending on your chemistry on some people I feel like on my mom like when I smelled her I feel like it went quite like floral and soapy like the jasmine and, and there was a like a soapiness to this and sometimes it'll do that on my skin too but it smells great on people of like all different ages. Like I love this and it feels so special to me, but I have a lot of positive associations with this. The very first time I got this, like the, and I took this on a trip with me, like around Christmas time, it was the one scent I brought. And because I was just so enamored with it. And my mom, my sister didn't bring perfume and both of them were like, can we borrow it for brunch? And I was like, of course smelled great on each of them on each of us and they all liked it and also my boyfriend likes this but i loved this before before i was before i even met my boyfriend um but he really likes this and finds this incredibly sexy so that's just like a bonus right all genders like this men love it women love it it is sexy. When I say all genders like it though, it's the, that's just cause people of all genders can like it. It is the same exact as, this I actually haven't had super polarizing reactions to. Um, my dad doesn't really like it, but my dad doesn't like a lot of my perfumes, but it is the same as Angel in its polarizing, like it's a statement, it's a statement. And so with a statement comes polarization some people are gonna love it some people are gonna hate it I know plenty of people who hate alien not necessarily I've never had any like bad reactions to people around me disliking alien but I know that people exist who hate alien but it just makes it that more more special and like I'm definitely in an alien like alien is a very special perfume to me in the season of my life so yeah, these are my top 10 perfumes at the moment. Um, now, it's not like the top 10 that I've been wearing like these past few weeks. It's not that like day to day. Um, but these are like the, the past, these are the 10 perfumes for the past few months that feel the most special and resonant to me. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this little ramble. And um, let me know, do you like any of the perfumes in my top 10? What's your top 10 look like? Okay, we'll talk soon. Bye, guys.